Today in the bunker, we're going to build a Cawdor temple suitable for the underhive. The basis of this build is the Pegasus Hobbies Gothic City Building Small Set Number Two. Um, it's it's a a decent kit. Um, it's, I think it's pretty fairly priced. It is in print, so it's easy to get, or relatively easy to get. I bought this at one of my friendly local hobby stores, but you can easily get it online. And note that this picture on here is exactly what comes in the box. Um, so there's no roof. You have to make one. Um, most people use these as ruins, so probably not a big deal. But in our case, we're going to do some careful scratch building. One of the highlights of this kit are the extensive oh, instructions. Um, I believe you can figure this kit out pretty much just by trial and error. So, um, yeah. After a bit of trial and error assembly and some gluing, I uh, ended up with this. I probably should have put these down here, but it's not a huge deal. Um, if you're really clever, you could make some stained glass inserts to go in there, and that would look really sharp. Uh, this is kind of nice because you can you could have the guy shoot out the bottom, I guess, if you were using it in that fashion. Um, the biggest thing is going to be putting on a roof. You've got these two end pieces that go on here, so I'm going to have to cut these middle bits off. And we're going to lay something on there to make the edge of a roof. And then we'll make a roof that goes in there. I've got some tile we can use. Uh, the flying buttresses, I would suggest these generally fit tight enough. They don't need to be glued into place. And I would have them removable just for ease of transport if you needed to move this somewhere. Just an option. Uh, this kit also comes with a number of little things to insert gargoyles and whatnot in all of these slots and including just some little blank pieces just to cover those holes up. So you have a lot of options, lanterns, torches, that sort of thing to put on here. So you can kind of go nuts when you decorate it and make it kind of whatever theme you want. Um, I'll probably stick some tech bits on here just to give it more of an underhive feel. Another helpful tip that the instructions don't really tell you, uh, these doors, if you want them to open and close, uh, they go in underneath some pieces. Uh, don't glue those pieces on first or you end up having to do surgery and cut them apart again. And don't ask me how I know that. When you're adding the little bits into these slots, uh, be careful. Some of these don't fit very well. You have to fit a little tab uh, going in there. Otherwise, you can easily snap those lamps off. Thankfully, I haven't done that yet. But I puzzled over the roof line for a bit and finally ended up scrounging around through my bits box and finding these pieces of construction. I'm not even sure what they're called. They're not I-beams, uh, but it was from some model railroad stuff that I bought years ago. And they just happened to be pretty much the perfect size. So that's going to fill those gaps on the side. I may put some mesh in there too, or I may not. I may just leave it. Uh, but we're going to use some chipboard and we're going to build a roof um, that hopefully will look the part. Here's what I ended up building, and it's a bit fiddly. I haven't glued it all together or primed it yet, but I want to show you the interior structure. I made these support pieces on each end, and none of this is glued together yet. Um, just to fit inside the confines of the arch or the, yeah, I think it's the arch. Like these are girders. I finally remember these are called girders. Um, English is hard. So that's where we're at there. It's probably a little over-engineered, uh, but that's how I do stuff. So this will all end up being glued together. Uh, I'm going to prime it all first so that it's moisture proof. And uh, then we'll set about making it. I'm going to give it an appearance kind of like um, like a leaded ceiling. And you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about when we're done. Now I've got the pieces glued together and primed. Or I primed them first and then glued them together. Um, because I was a little imprecise in my cutting, you can see there's a gap at the top. We're going to use 
some of this half round plastic, can't really get it to focus, um, to fill that gap. And then we're going to add uh, some lines on there with this flat styrene strip. Uh, we're just going to super glue that in place. So I'm going to put that on and we'll be right back. There's our seams added. Um, I originally tried to do it with uh, super glue, but this thin stuff is literally like water. It just went everywhere and I glued myself to it and uh, I made myself angry. So I put it on with PVA. I used Anita's and I'm going to let that dry and then I'll go back and add a bead of super glue to it. I also took some Plastruck cement and glued the beams together at the top just for a little bit of extra strength. Also, I should note, I ended up adding the, uh, the metal mesh to those girders, and I just attached that with the aforementioned watery super glue and a little bit of baking soda, which will paint as kind of a rusty effect anyway, so the texture is actually kind of a bonus here. To add a bit of visual interest, I glued on some strips of paper drywall tape that I happen to have from years ago. Uh, it's kind of a pierced metal planking look. And here we are with some primer. Just uh, rattle can that black and then put a heavy zenithal of gray over that. And of course, the roof section is all black. Uh, I'm going to airbrush that with some green color and add some rust. And then we'll add some metallic details um, to some of the other bits. To add a little bit more color to the building, I went ahead and airbrushed the uh, roof which you could totally stipple this color on here. I just used a dark green and then a lighter green. It doesn't really matter what you're using. You could do it almost any color combination, really, uh, and it would look pretty good. In order to weather the building, I added uh, a burnt umber oil wash. I guess because nobody can cook umber properly anymore. And then... Um, to make it pop a little bit, I just used a light tan, in this case, skeleton bone, and dry brushed some of the stonework. So that kind of makes it pop out a little bit, but still retains that sort of dirty, aged look. I should note, too, that the dry brush that I'm using, uh, this is one I got from the Army Painter, but you could use the kinds from like Artist Opus, or, you know, those are supposed to be really nice. Um, it's a little odd in that it's not really sort of dry brushing per se. Um, you want this to be damp. You'd put a little paint on there. You would rub most of the paint off on a texture palette. And I use one of my older palettes with lumps of paint on it that actually uh, works pretty well. Um, if, you, if you do it on a paper towel, it dries it out too much and then you get that chalky streaky thing. This doesn't give you that. So I encourage you to try these. For the final details, I used speed paint, just on the lanterns and the servo skull, that good stuff. It works pretty well. And you could use any number of colors there. There's no right or wrong. I also shot a coat of matte varnish onto this to help protect it, because some of these sharp edges, the paint tends to rub off otherwise. So be sure to put some varnish on this kit if you get it. And there it is, our completed church with our scratch-built roof, ready for the underhive. I know this video has been uh, rather disjointed, and I apologize for that. It has taken me weeks and weeks to finally get this to a point where I could finish it. Um, and that's a testament to the power of sloth, I guess. But in any case, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope it inspires you to make something awesome, and I hope you have a fantastic day.